Hi everyone, my name is Erica Collins and I'm going to show you a program that we use at my school called Lexia. Lexia is used for our reading phonics portion of school where our students can log on and practice skills, take tests on skills. Um, recently it has replaced our program that we used to use called Compass Odyssey and now we use Lexia. It's strictly only for reading though. We don't have any math on there. We use another program for that. But I'm going to show you from a teacher's point of view on the website and then log into a student's point of view to show you theirs as well. All right, so first we're going to go to, in order for the teacher one, you have to log into mylexia.com. Each teacher is given a their teacher login and they create a password. So I'm going to go ahead and log in right now. And this is the home page it brings you to. It's kind of an overload if you've never had a training on it. So I'm going to tell you about the few tabs that I use most in my classroom. Um, I use Lexia a lot to base my small group around it. So as you can see here, it's a list of my students with all the student names here. Here it gives you the grade level of which each student has tested into. So at the beginning of Lexia, they take a placement test. And it tests them on what level they are currently at. As they work throughout the year, they go up in levels. So as you can see, this student, Colton, is in the kindergarten grade level, level 5. This student, Ethan, is on the first grade grade level. He's at level 9. And you can see they range from kindergarten level 5, level 4, all the way up to a third grade level 13. Now, he didn't start on this level, but this is kind of, you can see these bars of their progression. Another thing over here that we use a lot of for teacher incentives are the target goals. Total minutes per week. Um, now each student has a different target level depending on the struggle that they're doing right now or if they're excelling really well on their particular level. So here you can see target was 50 minutes, earned 65 minutes total for this week. Some students 20 minutes exceed and they love the program so they just continue to work all the time. Others struggle to meet their goal. Um, as you see down here, this student that I'm running my mouse over right now does not have a target goal. That is because of the high level that he's in. So they're not pushing him to work every single week, but the program is still open for when he wants to take a test. Over here on the right, you see the skill progress. If you see this is where, oh, excuse me, this is where my class started. So the dark blue is above grade level. The blue, they started on grade level and then below. So I had seven students who started below first grade grade level, 12 students on grade level, and one above. If you look where we currently are, you can see the growth. So we're down to six students below, 10 students on, and up to four students above, which is pretty good for only being in school for about three to four months. If you look up here on this tab, you can hit the class reports tab which shows you kind of the same stuff I was just telling you about. You obviously always can go into each individual student and see everything they have done from how much time they've used, what levels they've completed, what tests they've completed on that level. Um, but here it kind of gives you an overview, skill progress like we just talked about, the usage. And like I said, um, our instructional coaches have kind of like an incentive, just a little chart where every time a teacher's class meets their usage for the week, it's kind of like a sticker chart kind of thing. Um, so we really strive to make sure all of our kids get their total usage weekly. Um, and then here, over here, it kind of tells you the same thing before, what kids are at high risk, some risk, and then as well as on grade level, right on target. So we're going to go back up here to the top. This tab, the needs usage, if this were during, you know, a time where my kids needed some usage, it would show you what students and how much time. I make sure that my kids, I try to make sure that my kids meet their usage by Thursday. That way Friday is kind of our catch-up day. Um, here is the struggling tab. This is really great when it comes to pulling that small group. It lets you know what student is struggling. It lets you know they're instructional. And it also gives you a lesson that you can teach them. So basically everything is already done for you. Um, here are skill builders. These are worksheets, little activities. Um, majority of them are worksheets that can be printed out. Some are cut and paste. Some are read a story and answer questions. 
but here it gives you skill builder sheets and these are meant to be done once the child has already completed that skill. So what I do a lot of the times in my classroom is I take these worksheets, I print them out and I put them in their workstation folder for them to use once they have completed their workstation work. This is kind of like an extra work for early finishers. Um, and these are actually really, they're really great. They go right in with the lessons that they've already done and it's kind of like if you were doing a small group lesson, it's kind of an extension piece for them. So I really enjoy using the skill builders. And lastly, this tab is the certificates, which the students love. Um, so you'll see this student completed another level. Um, if I click on here, it'll show me her certificate. And we print these out in color for them, kind of like an incentive to keep pushing them forward. Um, the cool part about it is it tells you what level they completed. And then it tells you all the skills that they completed in this level. So if you look, Helena has mastered building words, consonant digraphs, sight words, categorizing words, and picture phrase match. Then it kind of gives them a little at home what they can continue to practice on. The students really love these and get so excited once they complete a new level um, because it takes them into another little world. So I'm going to close this out and now I'm going to show you what it looks like from the student view. So for the teachers you go to mylexia.com as seen up here, but for the students they have to go to lexiacore5.com. And I went ahead and exited out so you can see for the very first time. This teacher has to put in their email in order for the student to have access. So it kind of, you know, protects them and makes sure that it is a program bought by the school. So then it will come up and it see obviously Horry County School District. And this is what the student view will look like. So I'm going to log into a student's page. And then ask, is this your name? Reagan O'Keefe. Yes, it's not my name, but I have permission to use this child's. So I'm going to hit yes. So now if you look, here is Reagan. So every student is obviously on a different part of the world. So it takes them and travels them all around. Um, you'll see here that she, the highest one that they can complete is level 18. Now the unfortunate part about this is once they get to level 18, they're finished with the program. Um, so at, probably by next year when Reagan is in second grade, she will be finished with the program, which is okay because in third grade they start moving on to different programs like Alex and things like that. So Reagan is on world 11. That's where she's at, level 11, I guess you could say. Um, and each level is designed different. They've got the Arctic, um, the desert, all kinds of different things. So it shows you this week she has 83 minutes, 11 units that she has completed. So I'm going to go ahead and enter her world. Get ready to warm up. Now you see over here on the left she has not done the fast find, so she's done the super sort. So I'm going to go ahead and click these. She's completed all three. So I'm going to start with the fast find, show you what one of the little skills looks like. Look at each word and choose the one that matches. Ready? Go! Water. Light. Warm. Eight. Kind of tricky. Water. Laugh. Watch. Own. Now I'm going to mess this one up. There. Only. Good work. So you'll see whenever you first log into it, before it takes you to your level, it kind of gives you like a warm up activity, and that's what that was right there. Then right here it tells, you know, on her fast find, it was for fluency. She got an 8, missed the 1, so that's why it took her star off there. Then I'm going to enter into her little level. Now I'm 
to go ahead and bypass all of that. So what you'll see is this is Reagan's little world. All these pictures are spots that she can click on for little activities as well. And once the student has clicked on that activity, it's done with. So you see up here, these are the units that she's going to be working on. She's got hard and soft C and G sound, syllable division, spelling rules, synonyms and antonyms, sentence structure. Now I've taught my students just to, so it's easier for me to keep track of where they are. They are supposed to go from left to right. Now you see, once they get to the higher levels, that kind of gives them the freedom to do as they please. So once all of the little spots around it are full, it kind of turns it into a metal like this one right here and these two right here. There are five on the first page, and then there are five on the second page. So if we go back, you see she's completed all five of these. Then it takes her to another five before she can complete everything in the level. These right here are in the whole unit. These are little mini lessons in the unit. Some have, as you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Others have more. So it really just depends on what that unit has set up. Once Reagan has completed all of these, she will then complete level 11. The students really seem to enjoy this because of the action, the engagement, the characters, everything that's in it. It's pretty real life for them, so they really seem to enjoy it. Um, there are some units that are hard, which the teacher can guide them through. Um, but the good thing about Lexia is when they make a mistake, it helps them and guides them and teaches them why that mistake was wrong and how to fix it from that point on. So it's really a self-taught thing that the teacher really doesn't have to do much for. Um, so I would highly recommend it if you have not tried out Lexia, you do so. And I hope you enjoy this program. Thanks.